This is part 74 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss cache profiles in MVC. We'll be working with the same example that we started in part 73. So please watch part 73 from the ASP.NET MVC tutorial before proceeding with this video. Now, to cache the data returned by the index action method for 60 seconds, we would use output cache attribute as you can see here. Notice that we have set duration to 60 seconds. So here we are specifying output cache settings within the application code. So specifying output cache settings within the application code can have the disadvantages as listed here. Now, if we have to apply the same cache setting, that is a duration of 60 seconds, for several methods within our entire application, then we will end up with a similar duplicated code at all those places. And later, if we want to change the cache setting, for example, I want to change the setting from 60 to 120 seconds, then we will have to make modification at all those places. So maintaining the application code becomes much complicated. And also, since we are changing the application code here, and if we want to have those changes taking effect in the application that's already deployed, then we need to rebuild our application and redeploy it to all our production servers. So to overcome these disadvantages, we can specify these cache settings within the web.config file using cache profiles. And here is an example of a cache profile within web.config file. Let's look at that in action. So now, if I want to cache the output of this index action method for 60 seconds, we would use output cache attribute and set a duration to 60 seconds. But we don't want to hard code the cache settings within the application code like this. We want to move these settings into cache profiles within web.config file. So within web.config file, under system.web, we want to specify caching section and we want to specify output cache settings so we want to use some output cache profiles so let's add a cache profile so give your profile a meaningful name so here we want to cache the data for one minute so I'm going to call this one minute cache or you can give it any meaningful name you want and let's specify the duration so duration is going to be 60 seconds vary by param is going to be none so I want to cache only one response of a controller action method. So I'm setting vary by param to none. We discussed in detail about this vary by param in our ASP.NET video tutorial. So if you're new to caching concepts, please watch those videos. All right, so at this point, we have a cache profile specified within our web.config file. So within the home controller, instead of hard coding cache setting like this, I'm going to use another named parameter. So this constructor of this output cache attribute has a named parameter called cache profile, as you can see in the IntelliSense. Uh, so let's specify cache profile. So cache profile is equal to whatever is the name of your cache profile. What's the name of our cache profile? It's called one minute cache. So let's copy the name, paste it here. Let's build our application and let's navigate to the index action and see if that output is cached for 60 seconds. So the first time the form loads, it's going to load it by executing the action method. Look at that, it's loaded uh, at 2146. Let's refresh this, look at that. Even after refreshing, the time is not changed, meaning we are getting that output from the cache, not by re-executing the action method. All right. So at this point, we have our cache settings within the web.config file. So what are the advantages of using cache profiles? Now, one of the advantages is we have one place to change the cache settings. So no matter you know, at how many places you have used this one minute cache profile, tomorrow if you want to change the duration from 60 to 120, you just change the duration right here. And at all the places within our application, we are reading the cache profile settings from the web.config file that is from that one single location. So, you know, all those references will automatically use the updated value. Okay, so one of the main advantages is that we have one place to change the cache settings. So maintainability is much easier. 
and since the changes are done in web.config file we need not build and redeploy the application simply make the changes to your configuration file save and you're done let's now look at using cache profiles with child action methods now within our home controller if you remember this get employee count is a child action method that's invoked from the index view okay now let's see using cache profiles with this child action method okay so since this is a child action method let's also decorate that with child action only attribute it's not mandatory but to be explicit about it let's decorate that with child action only let's build the solution and let's refresh this view and see what's gonna happen look at that we get an error duration must be a positive integer and if you remember within web.config file duration is set to 60 seconds which is definitely a positive integer so for some reason um, the cache profiles are not working with child action methods and to make these cache profiles work with child action methods there are several ways and one of the ways that I am aware of is by creating a custom output cache attribute if you are aware of any other better way of achieving it uh, please leave a comment either on this video or on my blog okay so we are going to create a custom output cache attribute okay so first of all let's add a new folder and let's call it common and let's add a class file so this folder is going to contain all the common code that we are going to use so let's add a class file and let's call it partial cache attribute and first of all let's go ahead and import the namespaces that we need so we need um, system dot fab dot mvc we need system dot fab dot configuration and we need system.configuration okay so this partial uh, cache attribute is going to extend the output cache attribute so I'm going to inherit from the output cache attribute class now let's include a constructor for this partial cache attribute so a public constructor and to this constructor we're going to pass cache profile name so what is this constructor going to do this constructor is going to read you know the cache profile settings from web.config file for us okay and uh, obviously the cache profile settings are present so the cache profile is basically present within output cache settings okay so we need to read this output cache settings section from web.config file and to do that anytime we want to read anything from web.config file what is the class we use we use web configuration manager class so web configuration manager class and we need to get a section from web.config file so I'm going to use this get section method and you specify the path for the section so the path is going to be system.web within that we have caching section so caching and within that we have output cache settings section so that's the path okay now this get section look at that it returns an object but we know this get section what section is it going to return it's going to return output cache settings section so so we're going to get output cache settings section and let's give it that meaningful name output cache settings section is equal to so we need to typecast the object type to output cache settings so all we are doing here is we are getting that section since that is returning an you know a type of object type we need to typecast it to be of type output cache settings and we are storing whatever this function is returning in this variable okay so within output cache settings section so within web.config file 
within output cache settings what do you have you have output cache profiles and there is a cache profile with this name one minute cache so what I'm going to do here so output cache settings section so that's the name of the object dot there is um, a property output cache profiles and then you can specify I mean basically indexer you can specify the name of your profile so what's the name of your profile one minute cache and what is this going to return this is going to return an output cache profile so we are going to store that in an object of type output cache profile and let's call it output cache profile okay so now what we need to do using this output cache profile so at this point we have reached into this profile and so obviously we have duration here vary by param not only that there are several other attributes like vary by control vary by custom vary by header so we need to read all these attribute values I'm not going to read all of them I'm going to read whatever I'm interested in I'm interested in duration so output cache profile dot duration is going to give me that similarly I need vary by param so output cache profile dot vary by param similarly you can read all the other attribute values as well whatever you have specified within web.config file okay so we have you know our partial cache attribute so let's build the solution now let's go back to the home controller now look at this instead of using the output cache attribute I'm going to make use of my custom partial cache attribute so here I'm going to specify partial okay look at that for some reason I'm not getting you know this IntelliSense for this partial cache attribute why is that that's because this partial cache attribute is present in a different namespace MVC demo dot common so we need to include that namespace within our home controller so let's include that and now let's see if we get let's actually get rid of that altogether and then use look at that partial cache and then once I open you know the bracket look at that there are two overloaded constructors and one of the overloaded constructors is expecting a cache profile name to be passed in so what is the name of our cache profile actually we did a small mistake here within our partial cache attribute we have hard coded our cache profile name instead of that what we need to do we can simply pass whatever we are passing to this constructor so let's go ahead and pass it there okay so now here within the home controller we are passing we're going to pass the name of our cache profile so what is the name of our cache profile one minute cache so let's copy that and pass it to the constructor so once we pass it to the constructor of this partial cache attribute so that's going to so that's going to receive that name and it's going to read that profile values uh, attribute values from web.config file okay alright so let's build the solution so we have applied partial cache attribute only on this child action method we have not cached the output of the index action method okay so let's build the solution let's refresh this view and see if it works okay look at that you know the employee list is loaded at 3153 now you know we are not caching this index data so this time is bound to change but this time shouldn't change so let me refresh that look at that this time keeps changing but this is not changing so we are able to cache portions of a view all right on this slide you can find resources um, for you know basically all my YouTube playlists you know a link to my YouTube playlist where all the videos are organized in a logical sequence you also have a link to my blog where you can find code samples and text versions of all the videos that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day